Somebody asked me whether I could explain the metaphor of the sun and since he was my first, the first one to comment on my video, I'm actually gonna do this. Plato's metaphor of the sun is part of his book The Republic and there he also explains the allegory of the cave, which is quite famous. And most of, most of philosophy student, students know this. They know about the cave. They might not really understand what forms are all about, but at least they know the, the allegory of the cave. It's, it's a very vivid allegory and professors like it. But still I'm going to say something about it, because the, the true meaning of it is often not grasped and the basic is quite simple, so I think I, I, I can just make the link with the last tutorial here. And it will just be a, a jump towards the metaphor of the sun, so towards the end I'll definitely come to this. So what, what is the allegory of the cave about? So there are some people who are um, prisoners in a cave and they are sitting in front of a wall and they're all facing the wall and in fact they can't move their heads so they have to face this wall. So this is, this is inside of the cave and this is outside. It's important that it's under the ground because later on we'll go, out, we'll go outside. Anyway, these people are inside the cave, prisoners, and in the back of the cave there is a fire. And just in front of that fire there is some room for people to walk through, other people. And what these people do is they carry objects. For instance, an object that, uh, let's say, the image of a cat. And the fire casts shadows on the wall so that the prisoners also see something like a cat. But it's of course the shadow of the object that these guys are, are carrying here. Or you see it, somebody here carries a, a table and what happens, the fire casts another shadow and on the wall the front wall of the cave, the shadow of a table can be seen by the prisoners. And the prisoners believe that the, what they see on this wall, the projections on that wall, that that is the real things. That they're really seeing reality, real tables, real cats, real stuff. Now it becomes interesting when Plato wonders what would happen if we release one of the prisoners. So let's say for all his life he has been watching this screen. By the way, I mean, this really looks like a movie theater. It's, uh, it's just amazing. You just see them sitting in front of that screen. But anyway, suppose that one of the guys, one of the prisoners is released and he can move his head and he can actually watch the other way around. He can see the fire and the things and then he, he should recognize that what he has been seeing for all of his life is not the real they're not real tables and real cats. They're just images, shadows, reflections, copies of, of the real things. And perhaps that these stuff are, aren't even real. Perhaps there is some light coming from, uh, from outside through some hole of the cave. And let's imagine that this guy, this prisoner, is even able to escape the cage. That's the little story that Plato tells. And then he comes outside and he's blinded by the light of the sun and he sees everything very sharply. He sees everything sharply. Uh, all the objects. Um, because they're enlightened by the sun. And what does Plato mean by this exiting of the cave? Well, we can easily relate it to, to what we've seen in the last tutorials. Um, the outside of the cave and the inside of the cave correspond to the two realms we have been talking about. The one is the realm of forms and the other is the realm of material things, of the material objects. Or put otherwise, this is the realm of the intelligible things and this is the realm of the visible things. 
Okay, so I can actually draw this this guy that I've been drawing for all the during all the tutorials. Um, so let me introduce him here. Um, here he is, and when he uses his eyes, his senses, he sees these things projected on the wall. So when he uses his eyes, he's just he's just a prisoner for Plato. He's just a prisoner. He, he doesn't see reality. But when he uses his brain, he can see the real things. He can see the form of the table, the essence of what it means to be a table, the essence of what it means to be a cat, the essence of what it means to be human. He can see those things. He can grasp these things, these intelligible things. Um, remember, uh, Plato believes that there is something like the form of um, being human while in reality there are many different human beings and they're all imperfect. The form is kind of the, the perfect essence of what it means to be human, etc. And this is something that we grasp through using our reason, through reasoning. And I always depict it as, as being the brain, but um, for Plato, reason is not really located in the brain, but it's more like in the soul. It's located in the soul. And therefore, it's not really located. The soul doesn't really have a location. The brain clearly has a location, right? I mean, we know that it's a kind of organ uh, in our heads, but for Plato, reason is something more abstract. It's more abstract because the things in the realm of forms are also abstract. These are spiritual kind of things. But for, you know, for the ease of, of um, representing certain things, I just like to imagine uh, the brain being that, that, that organ of ours which has access to these eternal forms. Anyway, um, if we if we can exit, if we can exit the imprisonment of the cave and grasp the eternal forms, the fact that we can do this is due to the fact that the sun sheds it, its light on these forms. And now we arrive at the metaphor of the sun. So outside of the cave, the sun shines and the sun casts its light on all these ideas, on the table, on the cat, on man, etc. And the sun for Plato um, is actually a metaphor for the idea of the good. We talked about the idea of the good. I said, you know, tableness and humanness, they all have goodness in them. Because the form or the idea of the table, that is exactly what it, what it means to be a good table. It's, it's the perfect table. These tables here are all imperfect. These people here are all imperfect. Remember the one's legs, a leg is a little bit shorter than the other, the one is bald, etc. But this here is a perfect man. And Perfectness is what all forms have in common and it's the idea of the good which gives perfectness to all these things. The idea of the good gives perfectness to all the ideas. So Plato believes that the idea of the good gives, gives the existence to all these forms and therefore also to all the things. And um, I mean, the sun does these things, right? It gives life to things. We know that, and therefore it's a nice metaphor. I mean, um, take a flower. The sun gives life to the flower. And that's how, how Plato sees it. But the sun does more than giving life to the flower. It also, by shedding its light on the flower, makes the flower visible, makes it visible to us. And, of course, here it's a, it's a metaphor because visible, we're not using our senses now, but we're using our soul, but it, it makes it intelligible. 
it sheds its light not on specific flowers but let's say on the idea of, of uh, what it means to be a flower and that makes flowerness graspable, intelligible by us. So remember, the sun does two things. First, actually the easiest is to say um, it sheds light on things so that we can see them, but remember we don't see them with our eyes, but we see them with our intellect, we, uh, we grasp them. And second, it makes them grow, it gives the existence to them. That's exactly what the idea of the good does. First, we can grasp what it means to be a table because we can grasp what it means to be a perfect table. We can see the goodness in the things. Therefore, the idea of the good makes it possible for us to grasp other ideas. But it also gives the existence to these ideas because a table is only in as far as it is a good table. That's quite a difficult idea that being good correlates with being. But that's just how it is with Plato. And you, you need to get used to that a little bit. And in a sense, I mean, there is some intuition behind it, right? If a table is really terribly bad table, it's no longer a table, right? If, if a table is lacking all of its legs, is it still a table? Question mark. If a guy lacks all his legs and, and limbs and even his head, I mean, is it still a guy? So being, in a sense, does correlate with goodness, with being, in a sense, perfect. Okay, I hope um, you grasp at least some of the ideas a little bit better and see you next time.